Hi and welcome to Devlog Zero of Unknown FPV. My name is Robin, I'm a C++ developer, and I'm very excited to show you what I've been working on the last year. Let's go! In this devlog, I will give you a brief introduction to the project. I will explain the process that I use to recreate real-life racetracks and the playtest. Yes, there is a playtest live and I will tell you all about how you can join that later on and how to get started with the simulator as well. The reason I started making a drone simulator is because I was flying a lot of drones at the time and I wanted to improve my C++ skills and this was such a nice combo that I just had to do it. In this simulator I wanted to be able to practice multi-G P style racing just like in real life. I also wanted the world to be stylized and vibrant because I hadn't seen that in a simulator previously. And the physics I wanted to go for somewhere between arcade and real life experience. So with that out of the way I had to figure out how does a flight controller work and how to implement the physics. The flight controller software took a little bit of digging and time reading through the code to understand. But basically it starts with your controller input that is filtered and then used with something called rates to calculate how fast your drone should rotate along an axis. Thanks to onboard sensors, the flight controller knows its rotational speed. And it also knows the target speed we requested. What happens next is that with the help of our PID controller, the flight controller software regulates the motor output mixed to the four quad motors. By mixing I mean controlling the quads individual motor speeds depending on the way we want the drone to rotate or not. Let's have a look at the physics. So, the drone has four motors with propellers attached to them. This generates four thrust vectors that gives the drone both lift and forward momentum. The drone is also affected by gravity and there is also a force called drag acting on the drone that is affected by surface area, angle of attack and the speed of the drone. So then I got started implementing my drone character using blueprints. I used a sphere collider for the drone and I merged all the thrust vectors into a single one. I also used the physics approach with simulate physics turned on and then I started implementing a control loop using blueprint functions. I added thrust by using the blueprint function called add force and since I had merged all the four thrust vectors I could not control rotation using that but that was sorted by using an add torque node. So this worked great for prototyping or single player however it didn't work good for multiplayer which is also called replication in Unreal Engine. What you can see here is the amount of network corrections going on and this is not good. Fortunately for us, there is a third person example shipped with Unreal Engine that has great multiplayer performance. As you can see here, there is way less network corrections going on and this is still using the same emulation settings that I used previously, which means this is performing much better over network. The magic behind the third person example working so good over network is partly because of the character movement component. However, I'm not going to cover the CMC into details as it's a very advanced topic and it could be pretty boring. So out of the box the third person example doesn't support 6 degrees of freedom movement and I had to dig through the code to find spots where I could change it to allow for that. And I made this Lunar Lander example project as a proof of concept and if you would like to try that you can find it in the description and feel free to use it as inspiration. So once I had a Lunar Lander example working, I continued by implementing a replicated 6 degrees of freedom drone. Once I hit the level of performance you see here, I knew that I could safely move on to creating a world for the drone to fly in. And this is what the sim looks like after about 5 months of level design, creating assets, sculpting rocks, making grass, sculpting trees, well just making a lot of stuff right. For track creation I use a consumer grade drone. 
I set the track as my subject and then I circle that while taking photos. These photos are then used in a process called photogrammetry. After I've taken enough photos, I'll then process all of them in a software like Reality Capture. That turns it into a 3D model, which I can import into Unreal Engine. With the help of the 3D model, I can now place the stylized obstacles along the racetrack just as you were in real life. And once that is done, it's time to try out the racetrack. And here you have a side-by-side -side comparison of the simulator versus real life. And to be honest with you, the footage on the right is actually slowed down, since I cannot match this Pro Palace page just yet. But I guess with time, I'll get there as well if I put in the effort. Anyway, I'm just really happy how this track recreation turned out. Okay, then it's time for me to show you how you can join the playtest. Open your browser, go to unknownfpv.com. You can also find a link in the description. Here you'll find buttons for Steam and Discord. Over at Steam, you'll have two buttons, one for wishlist and one for the playtest. Make sure you click both. Once you join the Discord server, please write something in playtest, because that will alert me of you wanting to join. I'm gonna give you some tips now of how you can set up your drone. We start with binding the axis. So if you look on the illustration, down below you have the left joystick for throttle and yaw, and the right joystick for pitch and roll. There are many different ways to set up your joysticks, but this is the most common way, so that's what I recommend. Let's open up the quad settings. So under the quad settings you have a setting called camera angle. The camera angle is going to affect the angle of the drone while you're flying. And the higher angle is going to give you more forward momentum but less lift. And a lower camera angle is going to give you more lift but less forward momentum. Let's move over to the rate setting. So the rates are basically the speed at what your drone can turn depending on the joystick movement. For now, I would recommend you to use a profile like Slow and Steady if you're new. Last but not least, the physics settings. I've added a few presets here and I'd recommend you to play around with the freestyle one first. However, let's say that you want to play around with the physics yourself, then you have three sliders here. Thrust will basically change the amount of thrust that the drone generates and it would equal like putting bigger engines and batteries on the drone. The second one which is the air resistance basically translates to the drone's surface area. If you would increase that, the drone is gonna fight more against the air, it's gonna reduce the top speed and it's also gonna slow down much faster. On the other hand, if you decrease it, the drone's gonna get a much higher top speed but it's gonna take way longer time to slow down. And the third one, which is the gravity. By increasing that, you're gonna increase the pull of the drone to the ground, and by decreasing it, it will become basically like flying on the moon. You're just gonna be floating forever. Two questions for you. So, the map is pretty big, right? And I'm curious what you would like to see added to it. If you could choose, what would you like to see? And the second one, the devlog. Is there anything that you wish that I would cover into detail that you've maybe seen here, but you, mm, how did he do that, kind of? And with that said, enjoy the playtest and I'll see you in the next one.